So today we are looking at week 16 against the Los Angeles Chargers, one of the best moments of 2019 for the Silver and Black. And we're joined by a guy who had a huge day in his return to action that day, now second year wide receiver, because the lead, the lead calendar is turned, Hunter. Second yeah. year wide receiver, Hunter Renfro. How you doing, brother? Good, I'm doing well. Um, yeah, that was a crazy day. I remember, I remember that day very well because we still had a chance at the playoffs. And Hunter, this was your first game back uh, after a few games missing with, with injury after what happened in New York. Really, it was it was surprising how quickly everything came back for you. For me, I just wanted to be out on the field with uh, my teammates and my brothers, and that's really why I wanted to get back so fast is if we still have a chance at this thing, if we still have a chance at playoffs, then, man, I want to do everything I can uh, to get, get us in potential playoff picture and, and go win a Super Bowl. You and Derek Carr were just in sync in a big way that Sunday in LA. So in the first quarter, 11-11 left on the clock, third and six, third and Renfro, it's third and Renfro time apparently, uh, and you take your first pass in a little less than a month and you take it to the house. Yeah, so we had a, a little Don concept call where I could break in or out here. So Derek dropped back. Thankfully, uh, pre-snap, the DB kind of snuck inside like he was going to play inside leverage. So I was thinking I was going to break out. And then right at the snap, he kind of expanded. So he gave me that hole. And that's something me and Derek had worked on a lot, uh, whether it was in training camp or this summer. And um, thankfully, it was like a dream to me. I mean, that's just something we've worked on. And for me, uh, it was back to my Clemson days where it was right when I was starting my career and everything felt like a dream. And it was like, am I really here? And that was that play for me. And it must have been cool when you're when you you're celebrating with Derek and all the guys come and run down. And that place was rocking too, because that was about as pro oh. Raiders crowd as you're gonna find on the road. I mean it was it was all black. Uh, I mean it was a home game. You can see right there in the background that it's all black. And uh, I I didn't they told me but I didn't expect it to be like that. Um, but that was unbelievable. You score at the end of the half and you get the ball back, you go down and you score again. Yeah, and I think Derek, he came here and he scored here and we always make fun of him because I think he nailed a Raider fan uh, throwing that football in, in the crowd. We, uh. we, I think Foster Moreau said he was sitting at home watching the game and he saw, him, saw someone just get smacked in the face. It, it was great too, because so we were in the box watching this game obviously, so we have kind of the bird's eye view of everything. And you see Derek kind of roll out a little bit. And I was like, I look to Kyle, the guy next to me, I go, I think I think he's going to turn the Jets on. And you see right about <laughs> there, there he goes. And he's just yeah. gone. He's getting better from a game-to-game -game basis. And um, that's our leader. That's the guy that we're trying to um, follow. So It was fun, too, to see him get so hyped up after the touchdown, too. <laughs> because I think we think of Derek a lot as, you know, the very cool, calm, like, you know, nothing is going to phase him. And I think that's why he's been so successful throughout yeah. his career here is that he's managed to stay super even keel, the good times, the bad times. Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, this year he's had twice as many rushing touchdowns he had in his whole career. So um, he did a great job. I, I, he's a lot more mobile than people think. Um, and I think that was, yeah, a lot of the build up, just excitement and um, beating the Chargers and, and being able to double dip and uh, get that get that touchdown there and hoping to get one in the second half. What was Coach like at half? Kind of what was his message to you guys coming after that last 30? Just keep getting after it, keep getting better. Um, <laughs> I mean, we still had playoff uh, chances up until that point. So we controlled um, winning the game and, and putting ourselves in that situation. So um, yeah, I remember coming out second half and Coach Green was like, keep doing the same thing, keep pouring on, keep pouring on. And uh, we came out second half and he was very aggressive with the play calls um, as far as just, uh, let's just gap scheme him, let's just get after him. And uh, it worked. And uh, and that just goes to credit of Coach Cable, the offensive line, um, the running backs, and, and just doing a great job of taking over the game there. There's a moment in the third quarter where Phillip Rivers has to call timeout because he can't get the play in because it's oh, so yeah. loud. Have yeah. you ever seen something like that on the road? I remember looking at a few of the guys and like just smiling because I couldn't believe that this was first, this was an NFL game and that I mean, it was all our fans. Like, it was 95%. And that's not an exaggeration. It was legit 95% of our guys. And, uh, yeah, it was it was unbelievable. It was uh, – that's why the Raiders fans are the best. And um, that's why I'm so excited about Las Vegas. Yeah, calling a timeout. Every road game we go to, there is a big, big contingent of Raider fans. Like, are you, did that surprise you at all? Were you – was there a moment you're like, oh, man, this, this is a little bit different? Yeah, I mean, the L.A. game was definitely a point. Um, New York, even though we didn't play well, there was a lot of Raiders fans in New York. Um, 
I mean, it was there was a lot of people. Uh, I, and the thing about Raiders fans, they're so loyal. That's the craziest thing to me. I didn't realize. I mean, it don't matter. I I ran out of gas on the way to uh, home. I, I drove back home with you all, and we we kind of ran out of gas in Lower California. And the the uh, the guy that came and, and got gas for me was a Raiders fan. I think my dad. We were because we were coming back to South Carolina, and he had like a Raiders hat on or something. And he loved the Raiders, and he was like, "Oh." The Raiders. He was like, "Are you a fan?" And I was like, "Yeah, I actually play um, receiver for him." And he didn't know who I was, but he 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 loves the Raiders. I can tell you that it was unbelievable. So, have you? Are you at the point now where you're getting recognized? Because like, I feel like if you were to walk down the street in in Alameda or Vegas or whatever, like someone would be like, "Hey, that's that's Hunter Renfro." Uh, yeah, probably a little bit more. Um, I know, I know, I probably shared this story with you before, but the first, the very first game of the year, I rode with Derek to the stadium, and uh, the security guard uh, asked if Derek had his little brother uh, with him today, and I was sitting in the front seat, and I was, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, uh, I'm his little brother, and so we just kept, we didn't even say anything, we just kept on going and saying. I, I was thinking, I was like, man, for this guy's first game back, you're on the hands team, you're returning punts, you take a 56-yard touch into the house. I mean, you must have been exhausted after this game. You probably slept very well on that flight back from LA. Yeah, I did. I, I but it, but we won, so I mean, it was all worth it. Um, that's the end goal. It doesn't matter if I play five plays or 105. Um, I got to give my best effort, and um, yeah, thankful that Waller. I remember there's a little indecision. I didn't know if Waller was going to go get that onside kick or he's going to let it go, but um, he did a great job of fielding it. Um, and we were in playoff contention, like you said, at the point. So that's that's what made it all worth it.